putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. We're talking about the Emmys and, of course, the leftists and their love, their desire, their devotion to self. Uh, you, you gotta, you, I got to give them credit. They stay focused on it. They really do. And so the Emmys, it used to be, you know, you'd watch these shows and you'd think, you know, boy, you know, this is the best of the best. And I don't know how many categories of, of things like best actress, best supporting actress and, you know, whatever, best cinematography, whatever. But now it's like there's 5,000 things to give to themselves and they're down to, you know, best Guatemalan midget costume in a foreign film. You know, it just cracks me up the number of things that you get as an Oscar. And then you get to put it on your resume. I got an Oscar. You know, I'm somebody. You know, I designed the Guatemalan midget costumes for Braveheart. Wow. He's an award winning and Academy Award winning blah, blah, blah. This bloke did this. He did that. He did this. Blah, blah, blah. He's great. He's fantastic. And they get more money to do, you know, I don't know. What do you make? When you're, uh, oh, she's an amazing costume designer, blah, blah, blah. Millions of dollars. You know, all the plays in America want you now. These actors are overpaid actors. (laughs) They they aren't architects. They aren't engineers. They're not doctors, not saving lives. They aren't doing something miraculous. Do they entertain? Yes. And I I don't, if you want to pay a gazillion dollars for that entertainment, be my guest. I'm not, I'm not paying $20. To get your political opinion anymore, George Clooney. It isn't going to happen. So they give themselves, they build monuments to themselves. More and more awards. Used to be just the Academy Awards. People's Choice. Then People's Animals Choice. And then it's, oh, Black People's Choice. Because then we've got the BET Awards. The Latino you know, Univision wants you to know who the most Mexican part of the the most Latino person that won the this, that, the other. It goes to Eva Longoria. You know, so, and all the awards are based on what? How much you capitulate to leftist Hollywood. Say the right things, we'll get you some roles. Hey, uh, Viola Davis, if you win an Oscar for How to Get Away with Murder and you're a black woman cast in that show, probably by some white person, why don't you get up there and talk about how oppressed you are from, from Hollywood? How it's terrible to be black in America, making all that money and stand in roles. And you finally get your, your day in the sun. You're the lead actress in a hit series. And you decide to talk about how racist it is. You know how long it took me to get here? You know how long it takes white people to get there? There's a lot more of them than there are black folks. And they don't complain because they understand there's only a limited number of seats at the table. And the seats are not reserved for black people, white people, brown people, whatever. They're reserved for people willing to work. Him and that. <laughs> Donald Glover, first black director to win an economy comedy category for Atlanta. It's an FX show. He plays Earn, a rap music manager and young father. Let's not go stereotypical. When he won his second Emmy of the night in the acting category, he decided to pull a Colbert. And here's what he said. I want to thank Trump for making black people number one on the oppressed, the most oppressed list. Yeah, because we all know if it weren't for Donald Trump, black people would be feasting in America. Holy cow. Donald Trump ruined everything. That gummit man, if that dude had never been alive, we would have skipped the 60s. We wouldn't have had J.J. and Good Times and all the black oppression in the ghetto stuff. We would have jumped right up to Barack Obama being president and really changing things for black America. Oh, that's right. He didn't. Jeez, I guess I got that part wrong. Yeah, Donald Trump is the reason that black people are the most oppressed in America. On the heels, the dude is months into his presidency after eight years of baby black Jesus, and they want you to believe Donald Glover gets up there and says, it's Trump's fault. He's probably the reason I'm up here, he said. You're right, Donald. He is probably the reason you're up there. Because he's one of those white folks that said, if you want an opportunity, I'll give it to you. And then you have your chance to shine. It's the Emmys, man. 
waste of time. Another successful Hollywood black lamenting his rise in fortune, fortune rather, with a backhanded compliment. Is that a, or a backhanded shout out? It wasn't a compliment to Trump. Hmm. And what Hollywood celebration would be complete without the child abuser Alec Baldwin, right? He and Kate McKinnon, who spent last year playing Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, respectively, I I think you could figure out who played who, on Saturday Night Live, they won Supporting Actor and Actress in a Comedy Series, SNL. Best season in years, won four Emmys on Sunday. Bash Trump will give you the awards. That's what Hollywood's telling you. They got four. How many are you going to get? Ne- are you going to get next year? Director, producer, gaffer, whatever. All you got to do is bash Trump. You get lots of awards. Look at Alec and Kate. We don't care that he talked crap to his daughter on a on a call screaming at her. We don't care that Kim Basinger. He practically he, he's got Kim out on the street. She's destitute. She's poor. Alec doesn't care. But even Holly Weirdos noticed, folks, how bad things were with the well-worn Colbert in his attempt at political, and I use my finger quotes, comedy. Really? That's just comedy? Deadline, this periodical called Colbert's performance, overkill. That's Hollywood's polite way of saying Colbert sucked. Here's what they say. Colbert said this. In a way, this is all your fault. He's speaking of Trump. He, He says, it's all your fault. He says, um, because the ex-celebrity apprentice host was denied an Emmy way back in the day. And as he said in the past few weeks and right after viewership topping late night, Colbert was quick to reiterate his belief Sunday that Trump is the biggest TV star around. Following that up with a weak gag about last year's record low ratings, the POTUS attacks went on as former White House press secretary Sean Spicer made a surprise roll on to the CBS broadcast show with a portable podium and a slew of untruths. And this is lefties rating Colbert saying overkill. Didn't like it. It was uh, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, but let's get to the ratings, right? Cause I, I mentioned that before, you know, what should the numbers be and how do you measure Nielsen and all these other people? I don't know who all does the rating stuff, but let's look at the numbers. I love how this site called Earn the Necklace reported the ratings for this event, because here's what they wrote. The 69th Primetime Emmy Awards definitely had a lot of talent and laughs, managing to have higher TV ratings than last year when Emmy viewership was at an all-time low with 11.3 million. These numbers have not been so low since 2013's 17.7 million when Neil Patrick Harris hosted the show. Now, I had to read that a few times to understand it, so I figure in radio may be tougher. But here's the, here's the gist. In 2013, the numbers were 17.7 million. Last year, they were 11.3 million. That is a huge drop. Just think about it. 6.4 million off the mark that was the previous low. The worst ever. Now, interestingly... At the time that I wrote this piece about this story, they didn't publish the uh, the numbers. I don't have them because I didn't look it up. But I'll tell you this. They made a reference to that the show had done better than the previous year. I went to the link and you can't find it. That that th- th- it, it didn't say it. They they said they hoped that Colbert's gags did enough to raise the numbers from last year. So here's what I'm speculating. My prediction is the Emmys continued their slide. But all that said, I want to repeat what I said earlier, which is without Trump, whatever the ratings are, they would have been far worse. And that's what I want you to focus on. If Donald Trump isn't the discussion with these guys, if they aren't incessantly trying to beat him up, they can't get anything. They can't get any traction. And even when that happens, their own leftist rags, in this case, Deadspin and others, said Colbert was over the top. Dave Chappelle said, I'm not doing Trump jokes. He goes, there's already too many. It's played. It's not funny. There's no comedy in it. It's only going to get worse, folks. And Colbert, he's a one trick pony without his persona. 
The guy has no career. It, when Colbert tried to play the role that he's doing right now straight, he couldn't do anything. The fact that he has a job is a testament to how far comedy has sunk. And I predict within two years, Colbert is either gone or he's begging Donald Trump to come on his show regularly to keep him afloat. That's what I predict. Folks, we're winning so big here. This is what this story was about. I hope you got that in everything I was talking about here. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.